you and me. That's how good this team is. Hey guys, welcome back to RBR and we are in a very chilly Aberdeen at the moment, it's minus five. And today's perhaps the biggest and most anticipated review certainly for us AMG addicts on this channel ever. And it is of AMG Super Saloon, the GT63S four-door coupe. Now, of course, the E63, or the hammer as we like to call it, has existed for a long time. But you see, there's a big difference between a car that AMG have taken from Mercedes and turned into an AMG compared to a car that AMG have made from the ground up themselves. Don't believe me? Well, there's a number of examples of this. The first one we can trace this car's origins back to is the legendary SLS AMG Coupe. Now you guys know this car as well as I do. What an awesome car. This car had no base Mercedes-Benz model. So it allowed AMG to create a car that had no restrictions in terms of materials, chassis, etc. So they made the SLS with gullwing doors. It had a dry sump engine with that legendary V8. It had a carbon torque tube and it quickly became AMG's most driver focused car ever. And of course there was a black series later as well. And this was a revelation to us AMG customers because before we had the mundane SL which no one was very excited about at all because it was essentially more of a Grand Tourer, not a sports car. This car allowed AMG to be their true selves linked to motorsport. I actually had the pleasure of owning two SLSs as well. Um, I sold them at completely the wrong time, which is rather a sore subject that I've just mentioned publicly. Anyway, I sold it because I needed more seating space. I have a family. So that car just wasn't going to cut it. I got a CLS 63 hoping it would fill the same niche, but it just didn't. It didn't drive the same way, didn't sound the same way, didn't look the same way. Anyway, during this time, AMG started work on what was then called in the press the baby SLS. And you can see the initial spy shots. It looked like a car based on the SLS platform, just shorter. And early, early people in this press thought that it may even be a 2 plus 2 like the 911 because of the different roof line. It looked quite similar. And I was certainly hoping this, but that was not the case. Anyway, the GTS came on the market and quickly again became AMG's best driver's car. It was faster than the SLS. It brought on things like um, dy dynamic engine mounts. It had a lighter body. And of course, the blistering and atmospheric 4-litre V8 twin turbo. And then this was only built upon by the AMG GTR, which is probably now the most iconic AMG to date, with 585 brake horsepower, use of active aerodynamics in the front, further weight saving and use of carbon fiber. And of course it was dubbed the beast of the green hell because of its extensive use at the Nürburgring. Now by this point, customers of these cars had realized just how far and how good AMGs can make cars which are not based on Mercedes-Benz. So a lot of us wondered, what if they didn't just make a two-seater car? What if they made a four-seater? Now, AMG were listening and they started work on a car that was based on, loosely on an E63 wagon platform. And they previewed the design of this in the AMG GT four-door concept. Funnily enough, this was the first ever video that we did on RBR, so things are coming back full circle now. And then surely enough, this, the AMG GT63S was born. This GT four-door shares a lot with its two-door cousin, specifically with the AMG GTR. The first thing is it's got the active aerodynamics, specifically on the front end with the active air panel management, allowing it to control airflow better in the front end. One of the first things you notice is the active spoiler on the rear as well in terms of aerodynamics. And this spoiler is a little bit unique in this car. And we'll talk about that when I get inside, but you can actually change the height of the one of the non aero pack car. It's also got rear wheel steering from the AMG GTR and the GTC, which is definitely going to change the handling, especially in smaller corners. We've got the dynamic engine mounts that we spoke about earlier, and there's a whole host of more rigidity here compared to the E63 specifically, like aluminium shear panel underneath the front of the car and more struts and braces that I'll talk about when we talk about the handling of the car. 
Now, of course, the engine, it is the M177 V8 four litre bi-turbo. And as I said, it's got 640 brake horsepower, 900 Newton meters of torque. I mean, this is nipping at the heels of the Aston DPS. That's how insane this Super Saloon is. But this GT4 door has got stiff competition from within AMG itself via the E63. So unlike the two door being just rear wheel drive, this car, like the E63, is 4MATIC plus variable all-wheel drive. And what that means is it's an all-wheel drive car that can shift the power either completely to the front or the rear 100% based on how you're driving and your requirements. And it also gets the drift mode out of the E63S as well. It's also an all-weather car, of course, thanks to the 4MATIC. And it also shares that 9-speed gearbox that the E63S has, so it can better handle the power. But one really important thing for a super saloon like this is that the design has to be right. It's got to look like a supercar turned saloon. So with free reign given to AMG, this car basically looks like a GT with two extra doors added onto it. So let's discuss the design a little bit. Of course, first came the AMG GT four door concept. And it's great to see that when AMG and Mercedes do concepts, their final cars, look almost identical to them, unlike a lot of manufacturers. So you look at the front end to begin with, of course, you've got the famous Pan Americana or the AMG specific grille as the GTR and the GT3 racing car made famous. That is here, the lights match now, the AMG GT family facelift, they're exactly the same, and especially the, the light design inside. You've got huge, huge air intakes, which are identical to the concept. And again, quite similar in some ways to the AMG GTR as well. You've got some serious power domes on the bonnet and the bonnet is long as you would expect an AMG GT's bonnet to be. And then of course you come on the side, you've got the wing with the side trim there, reminiscent of the AMG GT. The side of the car is very clean, very few lines, which is this new sensual purity design language by Gordon Wagner. As he loves to say, if you like a line, remove it. If you still like it, remove another line. Really, really simple shapes. And then you see it's got like a Coke bottle design on the rear, where you've got a really strong shoulder. And this car just seems so wide on where the wheels are planted. And you'll also notice this, at least from where I'm standing, I'll try and show you on film, there's a bit of negative camber on the wheels which is no doubt gonna help with the handling aspect. The roof line is exactly the same as the AMG GT two door. Let me show you that very quickly. You can see it's literally just an extended version of it. It's not the same roof line as you get in a CLS. It's slightly different in the GT and that is shown very clearly here. The side mirrors are also on the face of the doors like the two door. And you've also got yellow calipers just like in the AMG GTR. Now you get to the rear and again, it looks exactly GT. It's a hatchback format, just like the two door. The lights are exactly the same. The spoiler is of course active in the exact same position. If you get aerodynamic pack, you'll get the fixed one. And the diffuser now at the bottom is exactly the same as the facelift two door. Same exhausts, same size of exhaust, very similar diffuser. Everything looks exactly as it should. The purpose of this car has to be to look like a four door GT. And I wanna step back and say, how could it look more like a four-door GT if anyone wants to say criticize this? So let's do this. Let's take a two-door. Let's add two more doors to it. Make it a bit bigger for uh, occupants inside for the bigger seating arrangement. And bam, it looks exactly like what this car has ended up being. The only thing that annoys me is that it's still got the engine cover from the E63. It's just a small detail, but if you'd had the GT engine cover, it would have helped with the overall effect of this being a GT, in my opinion. AMG have said that the GT four-door is their most optionable car, so you can make it look very, very varied. This particular press car looks a certain way, but I've ordered one myself, and that's gonna look completely different, which is nice, because you guys will get to see that in March. You can get, for example, the aerodynamic package, which looks like this. You can get the larger 21-inch multi-spokes, and if you're in Europe, you'll, you can also get the performance wheels out of the GTR, such a shame that we didn't get those in the UK. So you can really vary the look of this car based on your own tastes. Now, a lot of people, certainly on Instagram, have moaned about the fact that there's no CLS 63. But I think that's a redundant thing now because this car is similar in shape, if not 
width because it is much, much wider, I must make that clear, than the E63. It is really supercar-like in its width, just like the concept was. But it's gonna perform better, it's gonna handle better, it's gonna sound better. It's going to hold its value probably better than a very expensive CLS 63 would. And you see the E63 isn't the kind of safe design that it used to be back in the day. So it negates really the need for a CLS 63, for example. So yeah, I don't think that we really need this car anymore. Now, of course, this is just the start to the GT four-door family. There's going to be cars that slot underneath and you need to think of this in the way that Porsche have different levels to the Panamera. So in some countries, there's going to be a GT43, which uses a six-pot engine. Uh, GT53 will certainly be in Europe, and it's a car that I hope we get to test because it's the head of the entry-level AMGs. But the outside, yes, very AMG GT. And the tech is a mixture of E63 and AMG GT two-door. But you see, inside, much of the same is true. So let's take a look at the GT four-door interior. So here is the inside of the AMG GT four-door. And when I first saw the concept, the thing that I wanted most inside this car was this, because it's the iconic part of the AMG GT. It's the center console straight out of the two-door, but it's been updated. And this time it's got LED screens on each side in the same format. So you've got four buttons on this side and four buttons on this side, and it's meant to invoke a V8 engine, which is, of course, the heart of almost every GT. However, unlike the original AMG GT, which had the analog dials, as I said, these have LEDs and they change as you touch them into the different option that has now been selected. And it's done really quite well and they do look really good in the daytime. The resolution is very high on these and it's great to see the content changing on there as you're touching it. It's something quite rare in the car industry. This particular method of using screens and UI mixed together. It's quite a lovely way of doing it. It's great to have this because like I said, it's signature AMG GT. And then rather than having the gear stalk here, which I really don't like, you've got it right in the middle, just like you do in the GT. So a GT owner like me coming into this, immediately you feel very at home because you've got that center console that you expect to have in the car. And it's more pronounced because of the facelift two door as well, because that also gets this center console. And it also gets this new steering wheel, what I famously call the AMG steampunk style, Pagani style steering wheel. Of course, that steering wheel, it has a touch button on the left hand side to control that left screen and a touch button on the right to control the one in front, just as we've seen in all other modern MBs. This steering wheel is also in the two door facelift and it's the best steering wheel, in my opinion, that AMG have ever made. It looks big in photos and on video, but it's not. It's pretty much the small diameter that you're used to with AMG cars but very much squarer. I think it's squarer on the sides, a lot more pronounced in terms of its square shape at the bottom. Um, this interior is of course the beige interior. The whole thing is beige. And I'm glad we've got quite an outlandish interior because when you see my car, it's gonna be the complete polar opposite to this. Now having a big beige steering wheel is a bit odd, but if we can look past that for a second, you'll see that you get the new AMG dynamic switches here. Now this is very important in my opinion for safety. I've used these a lot on press drives. I've yet to own a car with them. Now all AMG GTs come standard with these switches. And on the right hand side, you can change your driving modes and it's really easy to do. It's such a satisfying feel when you click these around. Um, it feels so premium. It's like something you expect in a supercar. On the left hand side, you have two options that you can customize by clicking on the screen itself to whatever you want. So I'm gonna keep the exhaust mode there because exhaust on or else. We need to have the exhaust on all the time. And you can choose a second one at the bottom. Then they are there for you to choose on the fly very quickly while you're driving. Really safe way to get this done. And it keeps your eyes where they need to be, which is on the road. Then of course, you're drawn to the rest of this front end here. And this is gonna look very similar to those of you who've seen my E-Class or CLS review because it is essentially the same front. But if you look at the two-door GT, let me show you what that looks like in the same position. And you'll notice that you've got the four vents underneath the main screen here in the exact same position. You've got one vent on each side in the exact same position. And the screens are of course where they were going to be. Now there is an argument to say you could have had a cordoned off driver zone and a separate screen like you do in the face of C63. But then a buyer who was getting into this, comparing it to an E63, 
I think you'd have a bit of luxury and a bit of screen envy going on. I personally wouldn't mind because I quite like the cornered off driver zone, but I kind of get the logic as to why AMG decided to make it as luxurious or as big in terms of the screens as the E63. But the GT63 does get the special super sport display, which was actually started by this car, even though it's trickled down into other cars since. And it's a really cool display. And of course, unlike the recent BMW updates in the 8 series, you're not restricted to that one display style. It's not quite as cool as the MBUX one that you'll find in the A35, um, which is a shame. And again, there's no MBUX in this car. It is just the updated command like you get in the E63. It's a really good system, but MBUX is so advanced that you miss it when you go into other cars. Whereas if you drive this, I don't think even if I go back into my C Black series, I will miss that many of the features. But one feature that is really important in this car is AMG track pace. AMG track pace calculates and records a lot of interesting data for the AMG driver. Stuff like uh, track racing on the biggest tracks in the world. You get all your lap times, you get all the telemetry data. You can record drag races, which is probably the coolest and most useful thing for the day-to-day -day driver. And that's in here, just like it is in all the other modern AMGs as well. Again, unlike the GT, with this car, you get the full range of 64 ambient light colors as well, which is nice because you can change the amb ambience of this car, unlike the GT, where you basically have no choice. So you can do all the multicolor different ones in here. So just a few GT specific things in here. These standard seats are actually unique to the GT four door. They're the ones I've chosen because you can't get the buckets with driving assistance, which is weird. I have no idea why, but they're really, really nicely done. You've got this lovely AMG logo etched into the matte chrome here. You've got the AMG crest on the headrest as well. And the shape of them is very, very similar to the buckets, but just a little bit more comfortable. And as far as the seating position itself goes, you're sitting really a lot lower than the E63 and you're very much aware of the width of the car and how long the bonnet is. Again, it kind of all reminds you of the AMG GT, which is exactly what you want. As for some specific GT things, you'll notice here you've got a certain icon for the retractable rear spoiler. Now, this is different to the two-door. It's actually more customizable. If we hold the button down, I'll tell you what, I'll bring it into the shortcuts here so it's easier for me. At the moment, it's fully extended, so all four dots there are blue, and I can hold it and stop at two dots, and then the spoiler will stay in the mid position, or I can hold it further and stop at three, and then it'll stop in there. So whereas in the two-door, you've only got one height, in this four-door, you can adjust the height either for optics or performance. So that's quite an interesting thing that's unique to this car. You've also got the brand new touchpad, like in the A-Class. So unlike the C63 facelift, which had the old system, this has got the touchpad and it's a really, really good touchpad. I was fearful when it first came out, as I said to you guys, but once you use it, you don't like to go back to the old one because it's so intuitive in the way that it works. It gives you a nice little haptic feedback and a bit of sound as well to let you know how much you've clicked and it's nice and safe when you're driving and looking ahead. I must say, I don't like the spec of this interior at all. It's too much beige going on, having beige all over the steering wheel how long is that going to last? Your footwells are beige, your boot is beige inside. All of that could have been blacked out and you could have left large parts still beige, but the areas that are going to get used a lot could have been black. And then of course, this has got piano black trim, which is again, probably the most boring trim that you can have on the GT four door. You get options of gloss carbon and matte carbon here, um, which look a lot better and give this more of an AMG GT look. But I'm kind of glad you're seeing this. As I said, when you see the interior that I've gone for on mine, you'll see polar opposite experience to this. Now the back is quite interesting in the GT63 because you get quite a lot of headroom and apparently it's almost as much as the E-Saloon and certainly as much as the A-Class, which is different to the CLS where you'll, you will have the less headroom. So I'm really quite comfortable. It's a very airy interior here. And then it doesn't stop there because you actually get three different rear bench options in this car. This one is the three seat bench, which is about 750 pounds. And it has the added benefit of course, having three whole seats in the rear rather than two. And you can have these seats fold down for even more boot space. I think it goes up to something like 1300 uh, liters. However, you also get two more options. One is having two separate seats 
completely. And the other one is a rear luxury pack, which brings in a command screen here. And as it says on the tin, it's a much more luxurious rear interior, but just for two people. But I'm really surprised how comfortable this is in the back. And I'm kind of glad AMG have given this car a genuine rear interior, rather than going the way of the Rapide where the rear seats were quite reduced. So I think families will be very happy inside the back of this car and indeed adults. And the final bit, I wanted to show you the boot myself because the boot of the four door is quite important. As the two door is a hatchback, this is a hatchback too and you really wanted that to happen. So as you can see, we have got loads of luggage in here. We've got two big suitcases, rucksacks and still loads of space to put more stuff in here. And this is a big difference compared to the E63, which of course just has a traditional boot. And if you get the rear bench, as I said, you can fold it down, get about 1300 liters total of luggage. And it's nice that the aperture is not small as well. So this is really quite a practical car. And I'm really happy at the fact that it is a hatchback. Now, this is my favorite part. I've been waiting for this to turn the car on and see what it sounds like on different modes. What I'm gonna do is start with the most exciting one and we'll work our way down into the other mode. So let's start in race. We'll use the nice dynamic select button here. Of course, the exhaust is on and we'll start the engine with the start button that's moved up here in the two doors as well, actually. Hang on, that didn't sound very exciting, did it? Mm. But there's a trick. Let's turn the engine back off you have to do what we learned in the A35, and that is hold the right paddle, the upshift paddle, then start the car. And then suddenly you get that much more exciting startup. And AMG have been, of course, probably forced to do this because of all the new European laws to do with sound and emissions, etc., which is why your car always defaults back to comfort. So if you always want to get that nice startup, chuck it into Sport Plus or Race and hold the paddle and turn the car on and you'll get that nice sound. Now, let's see what the car sounds like if you start it up just in comfort as well, just for the sake of it. So you can see you still perceive it's a V8, but it's very, very muted and it's for that executive who wants to wake up and not disturb his neighbors. Now we're gonna try Sport as well for the sake of completion. It's interesting holding the paddle and turning spot on gave a little bit of a pop as well. But now let's try some revs in comfort. Sounds okay, very much what you would expect. I expect sport is gonna sound exactly the same. And it does, it sounds exactly the same. And now, the bit you've been waiting for, Sport Plus. <laughs> Listen to that, that is addictive. That is ridiculous. It's got a different, a bit of a different tune to the E63. It sounds a bit more meaty. And I really wanted that coming into this car. Let's put it into race and see if that sounds any different. And as always been the case, race is pretty much identical to Sport Plus. So it sounds really good, it sounds meaty, and you must remember that a lot of manufacturers are making excuses these days that their, sound, their cars don't sound as good because of the particulate filter that's gone in as part of EU law. Case in point, this sounds absolutely amazing, just like the C63S facelift. But now I wanna see what it sounds like on the road, I wanna see what this big car handles like. Is it GT-like, or is it just a reskinned E63 I'm hoping it's gonna be the former, so let's find out right now. Now this is very much gonna be a first look at this car. We're gonna go into more detail and it's gonna be a full-on driving review with launch control and all sorts when I get mine 
in just over a month. And the reason for that is it's very icy out here on winter tyres as well, so it's not the best way to show this car. But certainly, this is my first experience with this car, as you guys know. So I'm going to impart to you those first impressions, those first wonderful moments of exploring a new car. So the first thing I can tell you, apart from the obvious sound factor, is how good the steering is. And when a car steering is bad, it always disappoints me. This one has got rear wheel steer, and the benefit of that is immense when you've got shorter corners. So we've got one coming up now, and brakes are good. You turn, and it feels like you're driving a smaller car. And the reason for that is that when you have the rear wheel steering, even if they're less than in the GTR in this car, it shortens the wheelbase of the car and makes it turn in more dramatically. So it makes smaller maneuvers that much easier to do. Which for a big old car like this is a key factor in making it feel smaller and more nimble. You pair that with then the added rigidity that AMG have put into this versus the E63 with the shear panel we talked about. There's also numerous struts on both the front, the middle and the rear of this car to give it more rigidity compared to the E63. And these days in modern cars, weight is not as important as it is to be able to sufficiently hide that weight through use of clever technology. And a lot of that comes into like the dynamic engine mounts that this car has from the two-door GT. It allows them to move the weight of the car, the main weight, the engine, with the car rather than against it and thus gives you a, a more comfortable ride when you're driving in a more sedate manner but then it allows you to get a much more dynamic ride when you're driving faster. Now can we please please address the sound because it sounds absolutely bloody gorgeous this car. Oh, it's got a hint of E63 hasn't it? And it reminds me of the facelift C63, but just louder. I think it's more like the latter. Um, and it makes sense because the engine is very much that kind of E63 tune. And of course, this is a new era of AMGs. We haven't driven the facelift two-door, so we don't know what that sounds like. On the GT side, it may sound very similar to this, in fact. But it, this does not sound like the GTC or the GTR. Um, it's got kind of a deeper version of the facelift C63, which is very, very nice, actually. Now, this car does have the fuel particle filter in it, um, which is something new that's coming into all cars. We discussed in the M2 review, discussed in the CLS. A uh, negative of it, a big negative, is that it reduces the car's sound significantly. AMG have managed to find a way to still make these cars sound absolutely bonkers. And that's not just inside, it's outside. Because inside now, there is some sound being pumped in from the engine bay. Um, it's actual sound that the car is making live being pumped into the vehicle. So it's not like BMW Active Sound, which is digital sound files being brought into the car. Um, it is the actual car sound. Someone said earlier today, and I think it's just a brilliant, brilliant quote, that it's a bit like a Wonder Bra as opposed to breast implant. So it's pushing up something that's already existing rather than making something fake, which I just thought was genius. Now let's talk about power for a minute because, as I said, this has got 640 brake horsepower, 900 newton meters of torque. What does that feel like in a big saloon? Whoa, 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 whoa. This is ridiculously fast. I think I left my stomach and heart back there somewhere. Oh my God. Do you guys remember the first E63 video where um, I didn't realize you couldn't swear on YouTube and I accelerated and it was very, very fast. Yeah, this, this was actually faster than that. Zero to 60 in this car is a mind boggling 3.2 seconds. And we're going to explore that when I get my car in March and we do the full drive review. But again, duality of AMG is something that the GT2 doors do really well as well. So if we put this back into comfort, with the exhaust on please. I can still hear the exhaust, sounds lovely, but the suspension has calmed down, the steering's a bit lighter in low speeds. It's still got a nice heft to it though, which is nice. But suddenly it's like I'm driving a really nice E-Class. 
compare that to a really compliant suspension, but it is rigid. So I'm feeling the bumps in the road and I'm getting the feedback through the steering wheel, which might not be for everyone, but for a GT driver, this is specifically what you're looking for in a four-door version of the car. You don't want, even in comfort, a wafty Mercedes-Benz. You want something that's inherently connected to the road. Now, of course, as I said, it's really icy, really slippery out here. This is a Formatic Plus car, and it's an all-weather AMG GT because of that. It's the only all-weather AMG GT. And because of that fact alone, might be a reason for someone choosing this over the two-door, because it's just gonna give you year-round use and confidence to drive fast in conditions that the two-door just wouldn't allow safely. When I first saw the concept at Geneva, on our first ever RBR video, I said that despite what the press was saying, this is not meant to be gunning for Porsche Panamera. Much like when you drive an AMG GTS, it's not a 911. Yes, they sit at the same price point, same part of the market, but they're two very different executions of this type of car. This is much more along the lines of the two-door. It's like a super four-door, and the Panamera is not like that. On the face of it at the moment, this car seems 10, 20% better than the E63 in all areas. But you have to realize it only takes 10, 20% for a car to be a C63 compared to a C43 or a GTR compared to a normal AMG GT. It's those small changes that make for a massive change in experience. The precise steering of this car in terms of feedback, the rear wheel steer, the way the whole thing shrinks around you and the way it sits on its wheels, it feels more GT-like. And of course, the sound, the thunderous sound. Let's get this car back in March. Let's really push it on the performance and see if that is the conclusion we come to. Is this the best AMG daily possible? So guys, I hope you enjoyed that intensive walk around and first look at the drive of the AMG GT four-door. Please do like and subscribe as you always do. It always helps the channel massively and I'll see you again soon. I've still got a little bit of time with this car, so I'm gonna try and enjoy it to the max.